News 8 Sports is brought to you from the Brennigan Auto Group Sports Desk. The News 8 Highlight Zone starts now. Welcome to the News 8 Highlight Zone. I'm Ken Kozarowski. And I'm Jordan Fremstead. I am ecstatic that Friday night has finally arrived, especially after we got a little taste of football last night, of course. Central and Bangor both dominated their season openers. Central 60-21 to over Eau Claire North, and Bangor shutting out Melman 56-0. Now tonight, we got 13 football games to bring you. Yeah, and it's going to be exciting. We'll start with the MVC and the defending champion, Holman, starting their tough 2019 schedule with a good test against Chippewa Falls. All right, they beat the Vikings by 14 last season. This was a business-like game. Holman up 17, moving the ball. Nathan Navala tries some space. Some space he's tripped up. That is a first down, and that drive would stall. So the Vikings line up for this chip shot field goal, and it's up and it's good. Holman extends the lead to 20, and the offense would blow it open from there. Jaden Abraham going to take the pitch, and he will score from five yards out. 27-0 Vikings there. But Chippewa Falls not getting shut out tonight. Hayden Goodman is going to throw a dime to the corner on this play here. Benjamin Karani comes down with it. Cardinals are on the board, but that's all they get. Holman, 27-7. All right, it's another non-conference rematch of the season featuring GET and West Salem. First quarter action, Panthers are driving. Justin Barney connects with David Lados. Nice catch there. It's first and goal. Derek Roberts, he's going to finish off the drive from a couple of yards away to give West Salem its first lead of the season. Now, GET would get it going in the second. Bryce Burns with a big boy run here, breaking not one, not two, not three. Four tackles on the play, just four, and he's gone. <laughs> 66 yards for the touchdown. It was a defensive stalemate in this one until the fourth. Luke Vance weaves through traffic and he turns on the Jets. Ooh, he sure does. Six yards. He's gone. The Red Hawks have the lead with two minutes left in the game. One last chance for the Panthers, but Barney's pass is going to get picked off by Samuel Johnson. That's your final 14 6, a big win for GET. What a ball game. On Alaska is home tonight. Sorry about that. Why don't you take this one? All right, I'll take it. <laughs> Division one, Hudson. First quarter, Hudson trying to take the lead, but a field goal would just get pushed to the right. Anna taking over at the 20. Austin Larson at QB. Fires one over the middle to hit Landon Peterson in stride, and the track star turns it on. 80 yards, goodbye. 7 0 Anna. Now 7 7 in the second. Toppers go for the fullback screen. David Luck shakes an arm tackle and heads left and suddenly has a lot of space in front of him. And that puts Anna up 14 to 7 right before half. Anna ends up winning this one 21 to 14. And how about that fullback screen? <laughs> Sparta had its best season in more than a decade last year. Tonight against BRF, final seconds of the half. Spartans already up big, and Brett Stiesel rolls out. Hits Matt Beaver for the six-yard score. Sparta in charge, 56-0 at the half. Wow. And they weren't done there. Opening kick of the third quarter, Corbin Hauser playing it off the bounce, splits a few tacklers, gets to the outside, and you are not going to catch him. It's Hauser taking it to the house. Sparta leading by 63 at this point. You could catch him, Ken. Oh, no, you're too kind. <laughs> BRF would end the shutout on their next drive. Elliot Bird buying time here, rolling to his left. He's able to find Mike Rue downfield. Rue makes a few cuts, and he's in. 31-yard score to make it 63-8. But Sparta comes right back on their next drive. Stiesel using the legs and rushing in for another touchdown. 70-8 midway through the third. Sparta in complete control. It's a blowout win, 70-16. Incredible. Yeah, incredible indeed. Lacrosse <laughs> Logan welcoming Eau Claire Memorial tonight in a rematch from last season. Logan clinging to a 22-20 lead until Loyal Crawford taking the handoff up left, pushing and putting the moves on everybody. Will not go down for turning up field, and he's eventually in. Logan now down. Julian Erickson trying to take the comeback now off play action. Deep finding Jake McHugh sack with a great catch. Drive would turn over on downs, though. Memorial goes right back to Crawford. Eau Claire Memorial beats Logan today 47-22. All right, we'll head down Interstate 90 to Toma High School. The Timberwolves welcoming Boston to town. Golden Eagles looking to strike early. Craig Armstrong going up the going up the middle, I should say, and uses a nice cut to bounce it to the outside. And he's chased down in Toma territory after a gain of 32. But the Timberwolves defense 
come up big. Here's Jaron Pierce with a huge sack. Toma keeps Mostyn off the scoreboard. Next Golden Eagle drive. The middle again, Logan Oliver. He is brought down at the Toma 20, but a missed field goal keeps the game scoreless. Last time we saw in this one, Mostyn was up six with less than five minutes to play in the fourth. A lot of good action. Yeah, it was. Well, the Cooley Conference is broken up this year for some football action until next year's conference plans are finalized. Arcadia is in the southwest this year, and they open the season tonight at home. We pick up the action in the third quarter. Arcadia is trailing, trying to get something going. Nolan Nemirowitz, a nine-yard gain on first down. But they would end up turning it over on downs. Ensuing drive, Osceola's Matthew German takes this sweep for nine yards and the touchdown. The Chieftains led 28-0 and just that kind of night for Arcadia. First and 10, they fumble the handoff. Osceola recovers. Osceola beats Arcadia 41-8. Luther will be in the swall this year tonight hosting Blair Taylor. That little guy wanted to see a touchdown. In the second half action, Knights will offer as night falls. Brandon Statler here to provide, shakes some tackles, gets a key block from Connor Peterson, and we can watch him run. He would tie the game with this kick return touchdown, but it's Blair Taylor over Luther, 28 to 14. All right, coming up, we keep our prep football coverage going into the Dairyland, Scenic Bluffs, and Ridge and Valley. Welcome back to the News 8 Highlight Zone. All right, let's get back to things in the Dairyland Conference. Independence Gilmanton begins the year, the year with some adversity. They have about 19 players total for 11-man football, and a third of them are freshmen. So the young wow. roster young team. in their home opener under new head coach Bruce Bowerman will start in the second quarter. Boyceville's Connor Semph gets the interception here, and then he is off to the races. How about all the way to the end zone? But a flag for holding was able to bring it back. So still bulldog ball. Still up 14. Boysville trying to capitalize on that. But the Indy defense holds strong here, forcing the incompletion on third down. But the Bulldog defense even stronger tonight. Tyler Dorman in with the tackle for a loss here. Boysville led 14-0 in the second last update we had. Still awaiting a final. Oh no, it came in late. Boysville winning 35-0. Thanks for that. We'll stay in Trempolo County. Whitehall taking on Colfax. We'll begin in the first quarter. It's fourth and short for Whitehall. John Schwartz does better than the first down. 30 yards all the way to pay dirt on this play. And the Norse go up 7 to nothing after that Strong nice play. Run. Oh, yeah. Colfax looking to respond, marching down the field. Noah Albrecht finds Ryan Albrecht for the 35-yard pass into Whitehall territory. But the Norse put a stop to that drive. Ryan Kleinhans gets the interception downfield, and Whitehall goes on to win this one 20 to 12. All right, let's switch gears into the scenic bluffs as Brookwood looks to build on last year's playoff appearance. The Falcons have basketball in town tonight. We join the action just before halftime, starting off for Brookwood. Quick pitch to Mitchell Klinkner, who's going to make his way through one after another until they finally bring him down. The effort. Good momentum for the Falcons. This time, they'll drop back to pass. Cooper Rounds is going to sneak through for the sack, pushing them back a few yards. Now on the other end, basketball ball, a little confusion on the play leads to a fumble. Weston Mullenkamp gets a hold of it, and he'll run it all the way back for the TD. Brookwood wins 47-6, no problem there. Yeah. And 30 minutes down the road, Hillsboro and Potosi starting off for Potosi. A quick handoff for Ryan Crusher, and he uses the width of the field to find an opening, and he'll take it a whole 45 yards before they bring him down. And here he is again, pitch to Cruiser, and... He'll get to the outside to meet his defender with a stiff arm, and that puts them at first and goal. I'll give you one guess. Here he is again, Ryan <laughs> Cruiser, the man with a plan. He starts the drive and finishes it off. First six points of the game. Potosi ends up winning tonight, 50 to six. All right, one more game. Want to walk center Weston of Scenic Bluffs in Jordan's neck of the woods. DeSoto finally the starting a game at home to start the season. For yeah. a change. <laughs> Last minute of the first quarter, Caden Pedretti drops a dime to Kyler Kuhnke for the score. For the first points of the game, seven nothing DeSoto. They're up 10-0 when Josh Boardman swims through the blocker, gets a piece of the punt, and Gabe Walls recovers. Great play. And that would set up DeSoto and Trevor Rebond to take it up the guts and into the end zone to make it 16-0 Pirates with only a few minutes left in the half. 
Less than a minute in the second quarter, want to watch Hunter Schmidt connects on the deep ball to Caden Sprott to cut DeSoto's lead to 16-6. DeSoto would shut down the Silver Wolves in the second half, though. They take it 40-6. Yeah, go Pirates. <laughs> the Highlight Zone doesn't just stop at football tonight. We'll move over to college volleyball as fifth-ranked Viterbo is off to a 5-0 start and in the middle of hosting their own weekend invitational. They've got Indiana University South Bend as we join the first set. Very first set, Abby Johnson going to set up her team at Maya Roberts. Cross-court kill off the defender to nail the turbo. Not long after, Indy South Bend will dig out one out, but Viterbo's Rika Drevlo spikes it right back. It's 3-1. A couple points later, Lauren Sebaski going to set up Mia Garrett for the kill to make it 8-3 in the first set. Viterbo keeps on cruising 3-0. Welcome back to the News 8 Highlight Zone, and it's time for our play of the night. And we'll flash back to West Salem and GET. It's Luke Vance for the Red Hawks with this game-winning 60-yard touchdown run. Too bad I had to leave at halftime. I know. Well, that's game. why we got Victoria Larson to go up late in the game and get those clutch moments. Absolutely. Any takeaways from the Holman Chippewa Falls game? Great defense by Holman. Really showed me something today and a way to get back, you know, kind of a game last year that got away from them. So, yeah. good and revenge game. Honest front seven as well is going to be fantastic all season. That's going to do it for us on the News 8 Highlights Zone. For Jordan Fremstad, I'm Ken Kazarowski. We'll see you next time.